Uh, Betty, here's a couple of extra items for six o'clock. Who's announcing? Damon Ravel. He goes in turn, will you? Certainly, Mr. Finch. And tell him to put the Admiralty announcement before Lord Wilton's egg. It's fresh up. Yes, Mr. Finch. Hello, what is it now? The war over? <laughs> Mr. Ravel. Oh, enemy battleship sighted off Newfoundland, believed to be the Nuremberg. Oh, the, the egg is to go after it, Mr. Finch says. All right, lady. I wonder if there are many people at the staff dance tonight. You know, I can't make up my mind whether I should go or not. Well, I've got an appointment at seven, but if you'd like me to fill in the breach after that, I should be delighted. Oh, it's not that, Mr. Ravel. I've, I've got a partner, only he can't get there till after eleven. His work keeps him late. He sounds busy. What's his line? Oh, I don't know that I should say. It's a job of national importance. Oh, back room boy. Yes, I suppose you would call him that. Arthur's the only person in England doing it. In a way, millions all over the world are depending on him. It sounds terribly important. Oh, he is. Terribly important. Good evening, Mr. Toby. Well, Mr. Parker, please. Gilbin's on his way down, sir. <laughs> Key, Mr. Pilgrim. I thank you. I think you better wait. I've got to be back in my back room by midnight. Yes, sir. Now let me see. What time must I leave? It took us 16 minutes to get down, sir. Mm, that was with the wind. I think we'd better allow 20 minutes for the journey back. 25 hours at the front door. I can do that in three seconds. Say a minute up to my office. Quarter of a minute to put on my overall. Better say half a minute in case I'm butterfingers. We must leave here at 29 and three quarter minutes to midnight. 29 and three quarter minutes to midnight it is. 29 and three quarter minutes to midnight. 29 and three quarter minutes. I've lost a minute already. Put me somewhere in front. I'll only be 10 minutes. And none too soon. What's the matter? Well, here is my dance, and this is Damon Ravel dancing it. <laughs> I'm thoroughly enjoying it. <laughs> and this is my fiance, Arthur Pilby. Oh, how do you do? Oh, well, thank you very much indeed. I've loved you. Oh, look, will you excuse me? I'd rather believe I wanted over there. Thanks for giving me place warm. Well, now you are here, you might as well get me an ice or a squash or something. Oh, the bar's very crowded. I'll never get it in the time. Time? What time? 29 and three quarter minutes to 12. What on earth are you talking about? I've got to be back by midnight. Oh, supposing you're not back by midnight? But I must be back by midnight. I've got a car waiting outside. Fed up. Other girls get taken to the pictures and things, but not me. Oh, dear me. My fiance is always popping off and pippy. I'm a jolly sight more important than Damon Ravel, anyway. Nobody puts their clocks right by him. Listen to me, Arthur Philbin. It's either me or your pips. If you leave me tonight, you. You needn't bother to come back again, ever. Oh, don't say that. If it was the European pips or the overseas pips, it wouldn't matter. But the midnight pips, billions are hanging on them. Well, they can hang on them, and so can you. 
What's more, you can, you can take that back. Oh, don't give that back to me. It's unlucky. I say, that stone's gone very small. You haven't been putting it in hot water, have you? No, it's, it's like your love for me. It shrunk. Oh, don't say that. I've looked forward to tonight so much. Don't let's quarrel. I don't want to quarrel. I want to dance. You mean I can give you this back? Mm -hmm, if you'll dance with me. Of course I will, Betty. Oh, you've got your high heels on again. Oh, one of us had to see which way we were going. Oh, it's half past, Betty. I've, I've got to go. I must, really, I must. That settles it. Goodbye, Arthur. Where are you going? Find someone else. Someone else? Yes, someone who doesn't always give me the pip. <laughs> Strathcona Observatory, Ottawa. Regret Principal Observatory should consider midnight time signal an occasion for deplorable levity. Hmm. A Wang Fo Observatory cables. Humbly request Honorable Observatory make time signal not mirth provoking. The National Broadcasting Corporation of America send this. Whoever it is, quit swinging the pips. Now, what have you to say to that, sir? Well, sir. I wish you could feel sorry about it, sir. But I don't. You don't? Oh, Mr. Philbin, will you come up here? Do you realize what you're saying? I do. And I'm fed up with the whole thing. When I came here, I was full of ambition. I learned astronomy, geometry, trigonometry, and every other blinkingometry. And what for? Just to pop in and out of a little back room and flip. You hold a very responsible position, if I may say so. Well, I'd rather not hold it. If I take my girl to the pictures, I always have to come out before it's finished. If I take it out to supper, I never get beyond the soup. If we go for a little cuddle in the park, I... <clears throat> oh, well, perhaps that wouldn't interest you, gentlemen. But you must expect to make some sacrifice to duty. I have, and what's happened? She sacrificed me. She's given me my ring back and gone after some other bloke. Well, well, there are just as good fish. But I don't want to marry a fish. I want to resign. I want to go on a submarine or a minesweeper or some place where men are men and women are just pictures cut out of magazines. I must remind you, Mr. Philbeam, you are engaged on work of national importance. Resignation is therefore impossible. You will kindly retire while we consider your case. Yes, sir. But I warn you, I'm not going where there's women. And I'm not working where there's pips. I propose, Mr. President, that we consider this matter closed. No, oh, I'm afraid that won't do. If we leave Mr. Pilbeam in his present office, heaven knows what tunes he'll play on the pips. Uh, if I might make a suggestion, since uh, he wishes to be removed from female influence, why not transfer him to my meteorological section? Have you a vacancy, West? Uh, the Royal Air Force wants us to convert the lighthouse on the Ori Islands into a station for weather reports. The Ori Islands? Somewhere off Scotland, aren't they? Oh, Forty miles, to be exact. There, the bleakest collection of desolate rocks in the whole of the United Kingdom. Well, gentlemen, I think the eyes have it. Is anybody home? Is that you, George? Aye, it's me. Here. I brought the gentleman from London. He's gone up to the Ori Lighthouse in the morning. Here, you mustn't shout that. It's a government secret. Ah, oh, here you are, sir. Come aboard, Ben. I beg your pardon? I said, come aboard, Ben. Oh, come aboard to you two. But I'm not Ben, I'm Arthur. No, sir. He wants you to gang a war, Ben. Oh, he's Ben. Oh, pleased to meet you, Ben. Oh, 
Come, Ben Lahus. It's bleak and cold. This way, sir. Here. Just a minute. <laughs> Gang Ben all. Here. This is Dave McIntyre. Yon's the gentleman you'll be taking to the Ori's in the morning, David. Oh, hey. Hey. Oh, hey. Sit you doing. I'll have something cooked for your supper. Oh, no, thank you. I had my cookie down the train coming up. Oh, well, maybe you'd like something to drink before you go to bed. Yes, I'd like a glass of milk, please. Milk? Yes. Uh, milk. Aye, scotch milk. Ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, gang away, Ben. Oh, hey, aye, oh, hey. Now then, boys, you've seen the gentleman. Don't be crowding him out. The boys heard you up for the island in the morning, so they thought they'd take a last look at you. Oh, that's very nice of them. A last look? Hey, you never know when you're coming back. Oh, I'll be back on the first of next month. Hey, weather and Branhelda permitting, as the fishermen say. Weather and what? Branhelda. That's the water, Kelpie. Kelpie? What's a Kelpie? It's a fairy. Who? Hey, Brandhelder brings us all the bad weather. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Bad weather is simply a meteorological phenomenon caused by adverse atmospheric conditions. Science teaches us that. Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey. Well, it might teach you that, and it might teach other people that. But we know it's Brandhelder. All right, all right. You stick to your Brandhelder, and I'll stick to my barometer. Oh, well. Where do I sleep? Ah, I'll show you to your bed. What time's he taking me to the Ollies in the morning? You'll have to leave at 10 if the boots will be back to be dark. It's only 40 miles. Oh, we only get four hours daylight up here at this time of the year. Four hours? Oh, uh, hey, oh, hey. That must be very inconvenient. No, 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 no. It gives us a grand long night in bed. Grand long night in bed. Come along, sir, come along. This is your room, and that's the bed. Ah, that's a grand bed. You know, my wife, my wife's mother, I and my wife's grandmother, they all died in that bed. I, uh, I, I suppose you haven't got anything small, eh? What about this? Oh, that's where the dog sleeps. Oh, put the dog in the morgue. I'll have this. Oh, please yourself. Good night, T. Good night, T. Tell me, Mr. McIntyre, what would be the population of the Ollie Island? You? Well, only me. Aye, you'll go mad. They all do. First you start talking to yourself. That's the beginning. And then, when the moon is full, Brunhilde will beckon to you from the Kelpie Rock. And that's the end. You're a nice, cheerful sort of bloke to go sailing with. Who is this Brunhilde? She's a mermaid. Oh, I know her. One of those girls who's half a woman and half a servant. Man, if you've seen what I've seen, you treat the matter with more respect. All right, I'll buy it. What have you seen? One minute, a living man standing on the Kelpie Rock in the light of the full moon. The next minute, nothing. Oh, and does the lady always visit the Kelpie Rock? Aye. Good. Well, I'll stick to my rock and she can stick to hers. Oh, is that my lighthouse? Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey. 
And which is the Kelpie Rock? Yon is the Kelpie Rock. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye thank you all. There should be another piece. Is this your net? Oh, yes. Can't do without the old alarm clock. Sticking will be such good company. Oh! I've dropped it. I'll have to take my shoes and socks off now and pedal in after it. We've 40 fathoms here at low tide. 40 fathoms? Six feet one fathom, five feet one Arthur Pilby. Here, the key of the door. Nummy is bigger than the lighthouse. Oi! Aren't you coming up to show me round? Nay, och nay, I'll be a war back while the night lasts. Get by and get lucky. Why? Well, I just remembered I want some cigarettes. Will you bring me a packet when you come back? I'll not be back for a month. What, wait a month for a packet of cigarettes? I can do better than that in London. One, two, three, four. Hey! Hey! You, wait a minute! Have you knocked up a couple of my bags? I'm too sure! Nay, nay, lad, nay! One, two, three... She didn't even give him time to make the bed. Just like a woman. Who? Arthur. What, Mr. Kirby? You're talking to yourself. You remember what the boatman said? Yes, Mr. Kirby. It's the beginning. 
Well, more stairs. All quiet now, then. Ah, spare bedroom, eh? <laughs> this is Blackpool. I can let it to three families. Ah, oh, room 504. How do you count for this, Mr. Pilby? I say, how do you count for this? So you won't talk, eh? Was this bed made when you came up here before, Arthur? I don't think so, Mr. Pilby. It's made now. Steady, Arthur, steady. This is no time for us to lose your head. Well, there's only one thing to be done. What's that, Mr. Pilby? Ignore the whole thing and eat it quick. Small point, Mr. Pilby. What's that, Arthur? This table wasn't laid out, Oh, don't talk with your mouth full, Arthur. Two tablespoons full, please. Hmm. Then you wake up. I'm expecting to wake up at any moment. Would you mind telling me what you're doing here? I'm drinking my tea. I can hear that, but how did you get here? Under the tarpaulin in your boat. What, you came in my boat? That's right. Oh, so you're the black hand who's been getting my lunch and making my bed. Did you find you? Yes. No! Messing about with my luggage and things. What are you after? Don't worry, I'm not after you. You're not my type. Well, if it comes to that, you're not my type either. I hate your sex. I loathe women, all of them. Why? Well, some skirt let you down. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't want any of your cheek. Who are you? What's your name? What are you doing here? Jane Turner from Lambeth, age 13, comes to see me Uncle Steve. Your Uncle Steve? Who's he? Steve Mason. I'm evacuated on him. Well, why come here? Because he ain't given auntie no money. Is your auntie here too? No. She's in Lambeth. Uncle's a bird watcher. What, in Lambeth? No, on the island next door. What island next door? It's on the picture. Oh, you mean the, uh... That's us on the right. Anchorage Island's on the left. What's this bit of netting in the middle? That's the one across, I expect. I'm going over to look for Uncle as soon as I can. You're not. You're going back to the mainland on the next boat. That won't be here for months. Yes, it will. I'm going to radio and tell him you're here. That'll sound nice. What will? When you tell him you're here alone with a woman. Woman, I'll smack your... 
Well, I won't, but somebody ought to. Now, what are you doing? Getting dark. Good gracious, one already. It's two o'clock. You only get four hours daylight out here this time of the year. Only four hours? Okay, aye, okay. Did you say two o'clock? One minute, two. Lummy, I've got to send out my weather report at two. Well, it's blowing up the storm, if that's any help to you. With a barometer of 29.8 and humidity practically nil, <laughs> don't be a silly little girl. We're entering a belt of fine weather. That's not what the seagulls say, and they know. Oh, do they? Well, I've taken the meteorological course at Greenwich, and that's more than the seagulls have. In spite of what they've done to the roof of the observatory. All I know is the seagulls is flying in circles. And that means wind. Is that a good way of getting rid of it? And there's a full moon tonight. So I've heard. And another thing. Mr. McDougall's corns were shooting, and that means rain. Yes, and I suppose if his joints crack, that means frost, and if his tummy rumbles, that means thunder. All I know is when Mr. McDougall... Touches his seaweed, he knows it's going to be wet. Now, listen, darling, I prefer to rely on my instruments, and they tell me that the weather is going to be fine and mild. Wet and windy. Fine and mild? Wet and windy. Fine and mild. Now, listen, darling, according to these isothermal windy. lines... Oh, they're to, to test the uh, velocity of the wind at varying heights. Don't touch them. Now, according to these isothermal lines, the thermometer reading is normal. As for the wind, I, uh, I never use instruments myself. I calculate by instinct. And I should say that the velocity of the wind is uh, seven miles an hour at the most, or what we term a gentle breeze. A gentle breeze. Well, we all make mistakes sometimes. Perhaps this is a light breeze. That will be about 14 miles an hour, or a steady breeze is 21 miles an hour, or a gale is 40 miles an hour. And that's what we're in for tonight. Don't be silly. The barometer's still rising. And so is the sea from the sound of it. You can't go by sound. You want science. And science says old and mild. <laughs> Fine and mild. This is the Ollie Lighthouse. This is Ollie. This is, this is horrible. Ah, metal. It's right over here. This is the only lighthouse calling Greenwich Observatory. Over to you. Over. Over. Is your watch right? Yes, I said it right by last night's pips. Oh, the pips are not reliable anymore. This is the Ollie Islands calling Greenwich Observatory. Over to you. Over. Greenwich Observatory here. Go ahead. Jane, I've got them. Come and listen. Isn't this exciting? Here is a weather report, and this is Arthur Pilbeam reading it to you. A belt of low pressure is slowly passing from the direction of Iceland towards the Azores. Wind a moderate, a sea a slight, a temperature average. All indications confirm expectation of fine spell for the next few days. Light southwesterly breeze gives promise of continued fine weather with a good steady southwesterly breeze. And of course, the wind may increase the gale force. But all other indications suggest that we're in for a dirty night. Are you sure you've got to go to bed now? I'm always in bed by night. Yes, but as a special treat, wouldn't you like to come downstairs and let me read a book to you? I thought you hated women. So I do. But I thought perhaps you'd like a bit of company. Why? Well, I mean, a kid like you in a place like this. And I like this. What's wrong with it? Aren't you afraid of thunder? Of course not. Well, I'm going to bed now. Good night. Wait a minute. Wouldn't you like to leave the door open in case you want to call me? I'm beginning to think it's not only the weather that's wet and windy. Oh. Not tonight, Brunhilde, not tonight. Jane? Jane, where are you? I'm here. Oh, I thought you'd come. There's a window banging upstairs. Oh, that's what it is. Perhaps we'd better go and close it. No, you go. I want to get some sleep. It's the door!
Be a man, my boy. Open that door. Go on, do as you're told. Open that door. Mermaid? Oh, you didn't half give me a nasty turn. Who are you? I don't hear the engines. The, this is not the Brighton Bell. This is a lighthouse. A lighthouse? Where am I? You're on the Ori Meteorological Station. I'll get you a dressing gown. Oh, I remember. I've been torpedoed. You've been what? I've been torpedoed. <laughs> well, I didn't do it. Oh, this is terrible. It's awful. Now, pull yourself together and keep warm. Thank you. It mightn't be as bad as you think. Oh, but it is. They're all at the bottom of the sea. I saw them go down in a trunk. In a trunk? All those beautiful dresses. We were taking them to South America. Who's we? The girls. Mannequins. We were going to Rio to exhibit British fashions. Now we've got nothing left to exhibit. I wouldn't say that. Hello, that's funny. What's funny? That radio's disappeared. He was here five minutes ago. Oh, I wonder if the kid... No, she's gone to bed. What are you talking about? Well, it can't have just disappeared. Do you realize without that radio, we're cut off from the rest of the world? I read a book when a girl and a boy were thrown together on an island. I remember they fell in love under a coconut tree. Well, there's no coconuts on this island. Oh, it must be somewhere. Well, why worry? You'll find it in the morning. Maybe too late in the morning. Why don't you come and help me to find it instead of sitting there drying your perm? What do you think I am? Yes, but he's in the cupboard. He's got on all the skins. Wait to get me torch. That cupboard there. All right, don't keep saying that cupboard there. Open it and show me. No, I don't. You open it. All right. Promise me you won't go away. I'm only opening it for your sake. No, I won't go away. There you are. That's all it was. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, let go of me. Let go. You know I hate women. A man in oil skins. But I saw a man, I tell you. Well, what happened to him? Well, he must have disappeared, like your radio. Well, there was a radio. And there was a man in oil skins. No, you only think you saw a man. You shouldn't think last thing at night. Now, come on. Come on to bed. Get some beauty sleep. Come on, there's a good girl. Is there a lock on our door? On our door? Doors with an S. Two doors, two rooms. I'm not going to sleep in there all by myself. Well, you don't think I'm going to stand here talking to you all night. Go on, go in. Hey, I'll have that. And I came here to get away from women. <laughs> Arthur, you nearly cut our face. Sorry, Mr. Bowen. I'm not quite ourselves this morning. Tell me, Arthur, did a young lady call here last night? Or was it a nightmare? A young lady did call, Mr. Bilby, and it was a nightmare. Well, what are you going to tell Jane? I mean, after all, a young woman in your bedroom. Very awkward, Arthur. Breakfast! Coming, Arthur! Uh, coming, I mean. Wet and windy. Morning, Jane. How many slices can you eat? Oh, I'm not very hungry this morning. I didn't sleep very well. Uh, did you have a good night? 
Yes, why? Oh, nothing. That's the butter knife. What's the matter with you this morning? Uh, tell me, Jane, do you believe in ghosts and things? Why? Oh, nothing, only you know there's a story about this place, don't you? Is it a rude one? Oh, no, it's a legend, a sort of folk story. Oh, a fairy tale. That's right. Yeah, uh, once upon a time, there was a dreadful storm, and the lighthouse keeper looked out of his window, and there on the rocks below, he saw a beautiful mermaid called Brunhilde. How did he know her name was Brunhilde? We'll pass that. Uh, now, listen, Jane, I want you to listen very carefully. I don't want you to misunderstand me, but last night, after you went to bed, I looked out of my window, and there on the rocks below, I saw beautiful... Skip it, I've taken her up a cup of tea. Yes. You've done what? I've taken your bird up a cup of tea. You know all about her? Brunilda. I hope you're not suggesting I'm not telling you the truth. Listen, we had a gentleman lodger staying with us at Lambeth, and he told me a story just like that. But his wasn't Brunilda, it was Bertha, and she wasn't a mermaid, she was a barmaid. Good morning. I suppose there isn't such a thing as an iron on this island. I say that. Uh, 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 oh, don't be so fussy. I feel terrible this morning after what happened last night. Hmm. I'll be in the kitchen. Oh, no, you won't. Now, all that happened was she thought she saw a man in that cupboard last night, but she didn't. I bet she was disappointed. Why, you rude little, little one. Well, I shouldn't like to say. <laughs> oh, oh, and I came here to get away from women. Well, I didn't ask to be washed up on this dump. The sooner you find a boat to take me back to civilization, the better I shall like it. Me too, as soon as I see my uncle. Has she got an uncle here? Yes, on the island, next door. Oh, has your uncle got a boat? How should I know? Well, I'm going to see if I can find an arm. Now I'm going to see my uncle. And I'm coming with you. Here to say, you mustn't be rude to the lady, you know. Lady, me foot. Well, after all, it's not her fault because she was shipwrecked. Hey, wait for me! Hope he hasn't gone to the pictures after us climbing that tightrope. Well, he's not in. Isn't he? Let's try down the back. Boy, well, when we do see him, don't forget, leave the talking to me. All right, keep your shirt on. I wasn't going to care about your girlfriend. Were you looking for someone? Ah, Mr. Mason, I presume. That's me. I haven't a card, but uh, my name's Toby. I'm over on the lighthouse. I sent weather reports to Greenwich. And this is your little niece, Jane. Little my niece? Oh, Jane, eh? Hmm. Yes, I am. And Auntie says, why haven't you sent her any money? Oh, perhaps I'm in the way. Uh, perhaps you are. Little Jane, eh? You've grown since I last saw you. What's the matter with your canary? It's a girl. It had damaged its leg. Oh. This one's had a bit of a do, too, hasn't it? So you've come to see your old uncle, eh? I've been evacuated, on you? Evacuated? Yes, haven't you heard? There's a wall on. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. A lot of people in Torquay who haven't. Oh, I'll bet the hen who laid this set out. Uh, you can't be evacuated here. I only have one room. You must get back to the lighthouse. What about Auntie's money? Yes. Well, I'll send that as soon as I can repair my boat and get over to the mainland. Oh, you haven't got a boat, then? Yes, but she was stove in on the rocks. She'll require two or three straits put into her before she's seaworthy. Oh, what a pity. I did want a boat. Well, why don't you wireless to the Coast Guards and ask them to send you one? Have you got a wireless? No, haven't you? No, he's lost his wireless. Yes, it disappeared. Oh, strange things happen on the Kelpie Rock. Hey, hey, oh, hey, hey. I wouldn't go over there for anything. Uh, you oblige me by taking the cliff path back. My birds don't like to be disturbed once they've settled. <laughs> My birds don't seem to care. What well, do you think he's coming back? I shouldn't think so. Well, let's get out of here before he stuffs us. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for having us. Ought we to go in? Well, we can't see much from out here. Dummy, what's happened? I'd better have a look. Oh, she's fainted. Oh. Oh, what can I loosen? 
I know how to bring her around. Do you? Well, I'll go and get some water. Stop that. What do you think you're doing? It's the quickest way to bring them round. It's the quickest way to knock them out, I should think. Oh, she's coming round. Stand back, everybody. Stand back. Where, where am I? Now, don't worry. You're on a lighthouse. You've been torpedoed and you're among friends. Here, give me that. Oh, oh has he gone? I'm still here. <laughs> no, not you, the man. The man? Oh, the man in the cupboard. Oh, Scotty Motion. He crept up behind me and... Oh, don't worry. There's no man here. You said it. Yes. Oh, it was horrible. Suddenly a clammy hand smothered my face. Oh, I can't stand this, I tell you. Take me away. I can't stay in this place another minute or I'll go mad. Stop staying mad! Hey, wait a minute. Nobody's gonna hurt you. You've done a fine thing, smacking her on the head like that. You've shaken her brains up. Some men swallow anything. Well, a man touched her. They'll make her faint, I don't think. You're a naughty, uncharitable little girl. You don't know how to treat a lady. Mm, lady? I see. I suppose I'm not fit to talk to her. I'm only a common little thing from Lambert. Oh, Jane, I never said anything of the sort. But you meant it. <laughs> Women. Women! I'll find that radio or bust. Well, I don't know what it is. Distress rockets. Well, if anyone's in distress, it's you, Mr. Colbert. Write the blue paper and retire immediately. Stay because the wind dropped. Let me tell you, I was steering boats before you was born. Well, you can steer away from here and take your picnic party further up the river. Oh, what in? Well, in the boat you came in. <laughs> Have you seen it? No, but if it was good enough to bring you here... I, I... Oh, it must have sprung a leak. Yes, she's foundered. So that makes us distressed mariners. More than that. It makes us bona fide travellers. And we're entitled to a bed and off drinks. What do you think this is, a dockside pub? We don't care what it is, but you're going to put us up until we're rescued. Yeah. All right, well, I don't mind putting you men up, but I'm having no more women in my lighthouse. They can go and dust with the bird fancier on the next island. Come on, girls. I, I... Hello, where have they gone? Now, where do you think they've gone after 12 hours in an open boat? What? They've gone inside to get warm. Not in my lighthouse. Oi! 
I'll dry this for you. Thanks, Bobby. Everybody's war, you know. Yes, but not everybody's rations. Share and share alike. What's up with you now? What's up? I come here to get away from women. I might as well have joined the ATS. Don't be so stupid. We're here and we're staying here. Yes, and feed in here. We'll see about that. I don't mind taking in an odd survivor or two, but I'm not going to turn this into a home for shipwrecked mannequins. And that case is not for sitting on either. Break me sake. What's up with the man of Aaron? Oh, he's a pain in the neck. Says he can't stand the sight of women. Perhaps one day when your sweetheart double-crosses you, then you'll know what it is to feel unhappy. Well, what do you know about that? I've brought you a supper. What are you doing? I'm applying a scientific mind to a practical dilemma. You know some nice big words, don't you? Yeah. These balloons are going to get you back to the mainland. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather go by boat. <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm going to write SOSs on these labels and tie them to the balloons. Would you like me to write them out for you while you fill the balloons? No, I can manage myself, thank you. Oh, come on, it'll save time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you are a funny little man. <laughs> Hello. SOS Ori Lighthouse. Eleven survivors, SS Morrick Star, torpedoed North Sea. Short of food. P.S. and cigarettes. <laughs> I've passed it on to the Admiralty. Thank you very much. That'll be all. Well, there's a good reward. You're the foreign legion. What's that? Hope it's not the bell. Oh, it's a message. What's it say? To the survivors of the Modic Star. Provisions here with relief boat calling tomorrow at 26. They're coming for us at daybreak tomorrow afternoon. What about the grub? Who's going to get that to the lighthouse? Oh, I can manage that. You love me. <laughs> I think there must be iron rations. You see the seagulls don't get it and I'll fetch help. No nibbling. Jane, on the... Jane! Jane! That's funny. She was down there before. Oh, she was, there was a basket. Look like she's slipping, you know. Look around. Jane! That's funny. I told her to stop here. Well, where's Brenda? They were both together up at the lighthouse. Perhaps they've gone up here. Brenda! Hey, hey. Brenda! Oh, never mind about them. What about the grub? That's right. It was much too heavy for them to carry themselves. You don't think anything's happened to them? Of course not. Jane was here a minute ago. Jane! Brenda! Jane! Brenda! Oh, don't be an idiot. They couldn't have gone down there. That's 40 fathoms. Well, they couldn't have gone back and we would have met them. Oh, come on. Brenda! I don't like the look of us. Perhaps she's gone to see her Uncle Steve. Who's Uncle Steve? He's the bird watcher over on the island. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go and find him. Let's... Let me go first. It was my idea. Uncle Steve! Jane! Uncle! Blimey, all spring cleaning. Auntie must have turned up. Uncle Steve! Brenda! Jane! Brenda! Jane! Brenda! Jane! Brenda! Ah, oh, well, they couldn't have gone long as the cigarette's still burning. Oh, is it up? <laughs> hey! The kettle's boiling! I don't like this. 
Here, listen to me. Did you ever hear about a ship called the Lara Celeste? No. She was found in the middle of the ocean on a beautiful, calm day, and everybody on board had disappeared. Well, what's that got to do with this? James disappeared, ain't he? Yes. Brenda's disappeared, ain't he? Well? Now Uncle's off dead, isn't he? It's another Marie Celeste. That's what it is. I'm scared. Let's get back to the lighthouse before it gets dark. Oh, yes, daylight's rushing around here. Come on, everybody. Yes. As quickly as you can. Right. We've got no time to do. Come on. Come on. Now, don't get nervous. We must all stick together. Catch hold of each other so nobody gets lost. Yes. Now, come on. Carefully. All right. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. all right. Are we all here? Yes, I think so. Now, how many of us should there be? Um, Eleven. How many? Eleven, including myself. Eleven, including yourself. That's right. I count you as you go over. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and myself. Oh. Hey! 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 Wait for me! Wait! Wait! Something gone wrong! Hey! Hey! There's one too many. Too many what of? Us? I counted twelve! Oh, you must have counted one twice. I didn't. I was ever so careful. Tell you it's the Marley Celeste. Oh, lay off, slap happy Sam. You're giving me the willies. Oh, you must have been seeing dumb. I tell you, I counted 12. All my fingers and my two thumbs twice. Perhaps Brenda's has turned up. Is Brenda here? No, I wish she was. He says he counted 12 of us over the bridge. Can he count up to 12? Well, we'll soon see. Stand still, everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven women. One, two, three men. How many is that? That's, um, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only ten now. Someone's bucking us about. Yes, come on, hold up. Which of you is missing? Well, where's Ginger? She came across the bridge. Not Ginger, she was next to me. Oh, this is ridiculous. She must be somewhere here. Yes, yeah, you said that about Brenda, didn't you? You said it about Jane, didn't you? <laughs> it's the Marley Celeste. That's what it is, you know. She had a hand on my shoulder, now she's gone. Well, perhaps she's gone upstairs. I'll go and see. Wait a minute. We'll all go and see. Yes. Yeah. 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 Nobody here. Here, don't wave that lamp in the black house. That's right, you'll have the wardens, man. Lovey, what's that? Oh! Oh! oh. Struce. That was a short day, wasn't it? Here, look at this. Chamber. It's the light. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So, worry, little woman. Boy, cut that out. Come on, get on. Go on. Up the stairs. Go on. Go on. Hurry up, get a move on. Well, the lamp's out and the cover's still on. I told you, somebody's bucking us about. Now who's not here? Roma and Shirley. Roma! Shirley! Shirley! Shirley. There she is! Shirley! Wake up! Shirley! Well, perhaps she's dead. Can't you shut up? She's fainted. Well, haven't you got some smelling salts or ammonia or something? There's a medicine chest in the cupboard downstairs. Well, get it, somebody. Hey, where's Roma? That's right. They were both here together. Oh, Roma! She's gone. I tell you what, when the boat comes tomorrow, you'll all be gone. I say, what peculiar perfume she uses? It smells like a dentist's. That's not perfume. That's chloroform. Well, she can't have had her teeth out while we were upstairs. What's Lizzie doing with those smelling salts? Lizzie! I can't find a darn thing in the dark. Bring a light down, someone. She's coming, too. Shirley, are you all right? It's me, Bobby. You're on a lighthouse. You've been torpedoed, and you're among friends. Oh, what happened, Shirley? I don't know. Where's Roma? Don't worry about Roma. I was standing by the bed and I heard Roma scream and then... Yes? I don't remember anymore. Is Roma all right? She's disappeared. Disappeared? Oh. Oh, she's off again. Can't you keep your trap shut? Where are those smelling salts? Honor and Leslie have gone for them. What, by themselves? Hasn't anybody here got any sense? Honor! Leslie! Honor! Leslie! Honor! Come 
darker. Bolson. I knew it. They disappeared too. Here, wait a minute. Where's Bobby? Where's Chris? Where's Tony? We're okay. Have you found Aunt Ron Leslie? I can't stand any more of it. Pull yourself together, kid. We'll all go one by one. Oh, no, we won't. We must all stick together. Remember, united we stand, divided we get knocked off. Now, from now on, nobody goes anywhere without the others. That'll be charming. Yeah. I wish I had a cigarette. Me too. I've got some in my... Oh, curse it. I left them in my bag upstairs. Wait a minute. No one saves from here without a convoy. I'll go with it. That's a good idea. One of us will go with you too. Won't you, Albert? Eh? What's the idea? Oh, go on, McNaldy with one of her cigarettes. Back in again. Yeah. Try yourselves up alongside. Chris! Where's Chris? What's happened? I was watching the door when I turned right. She's gone. Oh, she can't have gone. Hey, hey, perhaps somebody's having a joke with us. I told you we'd all go one by one. You told us. I like that. What have I been saying all the evening? Ho, 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 ho. Now, we mustn't lose our heads. There's a boat coming for us at dawn. Well, I've got the wind up and I don't mind admitting it. Be brave, little woman. Here you are. I'm going to put a stop to this. Come on, everybody, follow me. Now, from now on, we're post pickets. Albert, you go right up in the lantern chamber. Right well, there by myself. Yeah, we'll take that to keep you company. Jenny, you wait here outside the girls' bedroom. Which side? Outside. I'll be down by the living room and we'll exchange signals every two minutes. Well, that sounds a crazy idea to me. Well, this is my lighthouse and I'm giving the orders. Come on, upstairs, you. Do you mean it? Yes. Well, of course he means it. I'm surprised at a young fella like you. I don't hesitate. No. I wouldn't hesitate on this floor. Come on, upstairs. In you go, girls. You can leave the door open. Otherwise, I won't see you when you go. They're not going. Good night, girls. And remember, there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> Famous last word. Nine o'clock and all's well. Nine o'clock and all's well. Nine o'clock and all's well. the girls. Go on down. Come on, girls. We can't wait all. Sonia. Shirley. Oh. Listen. 
From now on, we've got to watch each other like hawks. I see. One watches while the other two sleeps. No, two watch. While the other one sleeps. Good. I'll sleep first. Old oh, world courtesy. Well, it's 9.30 now. You call us at midnight. Aye? Uh, we'll call you at midnight. <coughs> Must have dropped off. Bobby. Jerry. Bobby. sleep now. There are... Have you no shame? I'm only undressing. Well, not before him. He's been carefully brought up. Oh, live and let live. Here, get that clothesline. What for? I'll show you. What do you do with it? Fasten it up there. I can't reach. Go on, you're a big boy now. Oh. That's it. Get hold of that. Yeah. Fasten it to the line. This is dark. That's what I call this. Oh, do as you're told. What are you doing? Nothing. Come away from there. Nearly choked me. Aye, eyes front. I was only looking like that. No, you weren't. You were looking like that. Here, you eyes front then, too. It's gone quiet, isn't it? Yes, they've gone a bit quiet. Bobby? Bobby, would you like a cigarette? Bobby, oh! That was clever. Must be done by mirrors. Don't be silly. It might have been one of us. Ha <laughs> ha! Not me. Bobby, Bobby, where are you? That rabbit's foot was given to me by a witch doctor in Mombasa. Witch doctor? I don't know. He never told me his name. You know, I remember this lighthouse when I was a boy. <laughs> did they have lighthouses in those days? Of course they did. And steamboats. This lighthouse was a wooden and built up on legs. Hmm. I suppose he got up and walked away. No, it's still here. Yummy, I remember now. They built the new lighthouse around the old one. Well, I think I know what's happening. All right, don't tell me. Let me guess. It's like the Marie Celeste. They found it in the ocean on a lovely day. Fine weather. And everybody on board had disappeared. All right, I'll buy it. What is happening? <laughs> Jerry. Jerry. Fished out. It, it smacked off. 
Uh, they've been taken off in the fishing smack. What, they've gone? Yes, gone. <laughs> I might be going myself at any moment. Well, that lets us out, doesn't it? Yes. Oh, well, why didn't you wireless to us? What? Oh, wireless. It, uh, something gone wrong with the wireless. Oh, I see. We've rather wasted our time, haven't we? Yeah. Well, uh, so long. Uh, don't, don't hurry away. Uh, make yourselves at home. Would you like a drink? Oh, well, that's different. I've got some in the cupboard. Oh, no, the survivors drank it all. Would you like a cup of tea? No, thanks. Like Mother used to make? No. No? No. Oh. Well, so long. So long. Oi! I, I wonder if you'd do me a favour. Go, what is it? There's a Miss Betty Moore works at the BBC. Would you give her that ring? Yes, that ring. It's only an ordinary ring. It's an engagement ring. There's no message in it. Would you tell her that I never forgot her and I kept on thinking about her right to the end? The end? It sounded like you thought something was going to happen to you. You never know what might happen in a place like this. Okay, Miss Moore, BBC. Cheerio. Cheerio. <gasps> Shut your mouth. Both that door. That'll stop them interfering. Well, that's better. Now we can talk together as man to man. Man to half a man. Oh, don't go into fractions. I say, what happened to the others? You know, the girls. They saw things they shouldn't have seen. Yeah. Oh, well, when you're all heaped together in a lighthouse, you can't be too fussy. They won't worry you again. They've been taken care of. But you can't do that. They haven't done anything to you. I mean, be British. British? I think I know what you are. Shut up. You're a quizzling. But you're not going to quiz on me. <laughs> My place when they tied me up in the cupboard. He's an Nazi agent. That's my real uncle. Are you sure? What have you done with Archie's money? Never mind. Now, down the stairs, quick. Follow me. What I can't follow is this. Why did you come from up there? This is the staircase of the old wooden lighthouse. Runs down inside the walls. So that's how they did it. But don't you think if they keep their head. Side, aren't you? But what happens now? We've got to get the others out. That's an idea. Hey, who built this lighthouse? Jasper Masculine? Come on. Slight now around his neck. Yes, it's nice and tight. the other girls? Well, they collared us to keep us quiet. I wonder why they didn't take me. They had to keep you to talk to the Navy. These lighters were sweeping a channel through our minefield out there. We ought to do something about that, oughtn't we? Yes, get back to the mainland and tell the authorities. Come on, everybody, all aboard. Wait a minute, is it all right for us to take their boat? Oh, it's ours now. We're prize crew. What about the minefield? The minefield? The mines won't worry us in this. We only draw two feet. We'll go right over them. Thanks, I see her. Had it all for sailing, back in time for tea. All right, then. Oh! Die Versuchter, durchgebracht. 
Grant. So I keep to the left like I do on my bicycle. Keep your eye on the binnacle. Hey, what do you know about binnacles? I used to go on the fighting bin at Hastings. Oh. You sure you know how to work all those gadgets? Don't talk to the man at the wheel. That's right, I've got to keep my eye on the barnacle. Binnacle. Do you know where we're going? Jerry, take these girls about the pool. Aye, aye, sir. And come back here. Aye, aye, sir. There should be plenty of room. Oh, I see. It's these two things in the way. Well, perhaps these wheels have got something to do with this. Well, you said something like this. Very right. I see. I see them shifting them. I'll sit down and make ourselves at home. Anybody know any German? I only know four words. Heinz by dry and Messerschmitt. Then tell euch durch das Minenfeld zu folgen. Bobby, you speak German, don't you? Shut up. Ich sagte, wir sind klar für die Durchquerung des Minenfeldes. Wir warten euch zu folgen. He says they're ready to proceed through the minefields and he wants us to lead them. They've mistaken us for Fritzy. This must be the ship the speed of the channel for. Go see the head and go! Hey, what's the idea? We're going back the same way we came. If they want to go through the minefield, we'll take them. Those will be the mines, but we only draw two feet, we'll pass right over them. Yes, a hundred feet right over them if we touch one. Look out! Who 
deserves the credit. It's the boys in the back room who rise every morning to the sound of the factory hooter and make us those mines. I used to be a backroom boy myself. My factory hooter was a loudspeaker shouting, last warning, please. I used to... Here, Jane. You tell them. Betty! Betty! Wait a minute. Betty, I want to speak to you. Betty. Betty. Oh, I thought I was going to lose you again. Last warning, please. Last warning, please. Arthur, last warning. Oh, I don't have to bother about that now. No, but I do. You do? I've... I've got your old job. Tough world, isn't it? Hey, hey, hey.